You're listening to All in Our Heads with Joe Fernandez and Mike Gaffney. Please enjoy the show. Yo. Yo. Can you hear me? I Hold got on. you now. You got me? You sure I was trying that? to call you, but it kept disconnecting. Okay. You oh. got me now? I got you now. All right. Now, you did hear last week's recording of that that I was talking about, right? Yeah, it was repeating after whatever you said was repeating. It was? Yeah, that was on your end. It was coming through that way. I think it was hearing, like, maybe one of your, I don't know, something on your end was playing back through your mic or something. I don't know. I don't know. I don't hear it this week, do you? No, but it was, yeah, because not only was it repeating, every time you spoke, it would... We'd hear that a tinging. Yeah. And now I don't. And when I listened to the recording, I heard it. Yeah. So I don't. Yeah, I don't know what happened. What are you okay. gonna do? Technical difficulties. When people pay us big money to do this, we'll get some top quality gear. We <laughs> 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 have the studio. Uh, I think any of our shows should be technical difficulties. Yeah, it should be called. Te- yeah, that's our, that's our uh, other name. That's our, what do they call that? Uh, when a when a con when a like a thief uses an alias, that's our alias. Oh, man, what firing on all cylinders today, huh, John? I, mean, uh, I, I wasn't. I, yeah, yeah. Got them all cranking. Yeah, got them all cranking. <laughs> all pro- hey, I'm in Labor Day chill mode. I'm what are you about- doing today? Well, uh, I've been putting off cleaning out the front closet with my wife, so today's the day because okay. I can't wait. So, is she off today? She's off today. Okay. So. We've been trying to do it for days, and, like, we're out doing stuff. She's like, we're going to get to the closet today. I'm like, do it tomorrow. (laughs) I was trying to sell her on how, like, she needs to be more chill like me. Like, just put it off till tomorrow. She's like, she's a work. She's like a get everything done. And I'm like, get as much as you can done. And what you can't is tomorrow. (laughs) So I finally planted plants for her that have been sitting in the plant holder for two months. Right, <laughs> maybe about a month and a half. She got these free plants from her mom. She, like, you plant them in our flower bed. I'm like, sure. And I just haven't been. Just yeah. so she's like, look at they're blooming. They're nice. They're staying alive. I'm like, why disrupt them? <laughs> I could only kill them. Like, I can't add to their life. And then I planted them. And then I go look. She goes, you planted them backwards. I'm like, how the fuck do you even know that? Well, these plants, I guess, where they were. They started bending a certain way to, like, get more sun. So I had them bending towards the house, not towards where people can see them. And I'm like, I thought they would just find their way back. <laughs> I mean, I'm not, you know what I mean? I'm not no botanist no. over here. Yeah. I'm not a horticulturist, whatever that day. What's it, hornic- what do you call that? Horticulturist? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I'm not that either. <laughs> but uh, I did dig them back up and turn around. She's right. It does look better when they're facing you. <laughs> and uh so labor day weekend doing like so we hu- do, doing husband shit here's how we do at the house with with peren- with perennials and annuals this is how we do yeah my father around i guess around may uh-huh. april or may of every year has a brain fart that we are fucking landscapers <laughs> and, and we need to we need to put go buy. Here's he'll give me a fifty dollars or a hundred bucks. And go to Home Depot, buy a bunch of flowers, and we'll pull a plant them right in front of the house. I'm like, I don't know where we come into this because I ain't planting shit. But yeah. I'll go get them, and we take them, and we lay them out how we would like them to look. That's oh yeah, you put them in the spot. Yeah, like phase two. Yeah, where, where they lay them out like this is what they're gonna look. Right, and then phase three comes around, I guess, mid-August, maybe early September, where we were throwing them in the garbage because they're dead. <laughs> but, but they sat where they would have gone in the ground. But you, but, they, but you still had flowers. Yeah, they were there. They were there. Mm-hmm. And if they're annuals, they were going to die anyway. Exactly. Whether they're in the ground or not. So if they survive till September, they're like, we did our job. <laughs> we look beautiful no matter what container you put us in. <laughs> Yeah, perennials are probably like, 
why why do the Gaffneys have to keep buying us? Yeah, no, they do. They try to duck behind. Yeah, I come anywhere near the rack, they're like, fuck. Yeah, they try looking all shitty, like, ugh, wilt, wilt, come on, wilt, they're coming. <laughs> Gaffneys are coming. Just wilt if you want to survive. <laughs> This looks sad. That's a sad flower. I told the girl at Home Depot, she was like, uh, a friend of mine was like, oh, back again for for more flower murder. <laughs> more flower murder. <laughs> She's like, uh, did you plant those flowers? I'm like, well, plant, buried. Well, <laughs> I don't know how you want to call it. I, I, I would call it buried. The, yeah. Because they were dead. There was no planting. Yeah. I, every year, my father's like, Let's, and I'm like, Dad, you're not working. You're not doing it because he's too old to do it. I'm not doing it because I don't give a fuck enough for flowers. Man. I hate everything to do with the landscaping. No. Grass, trees, I hate it. You know what it is? Like, I hate it, but like the other day, I thought this hurricane was coming. Like At least yeah. a rainstorm by me, not a hurricane. I'm like, let me get the yard done because it's going to grow even more after this rainstorm. It's going to be yeah. a bitch. Plant the flowers, cut the grass. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, I hate doing it, but like I'm sit, I start sitting there, the dog out on his thing, and I'm I'm in a chair with a fucking iced tea, and I'm like, I kind of like this gay homeowner shit when it no, looks good. Fun. You know, you're like, wow, this does look like you feel yeah. like like a, like accomplished, right? You know, I feel like that anytime I do pretty much anything. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but like when I'm painting, it's like funny if I'm painting, like I get like half a wall done, I always got to step back. Go, this fucking looks nice. Like like yeah. just finish the I wall. I should have my own show. Yeah. <laughs> Third wall, you're like, why do people? You couldn't pay me to do this. Yeah, right, exactly. Whenever I paint, I'm like, how do people do this for a living? Whenever I paint, or if I move, oh, I know. Like landscaping stinks, but I can't. Like if I, that's something like I could do. Well, you like if you like being outside in in and around the grass. That's I just don't. Well, yeah. I don't like the outside. Backyard. Don't get me wrong. I'm paying someone to do my grass next year. I was late this year. Nobody was taking on new clients. I yeah, tried right. very hard to get someone else to do this work for me. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm going to start in February emailing people like, yo, motherfucker, don't be yeah. pissing me up. <laughs> I don't got that big of a yard. Bang this shit out. Yeah, this could be a quick little $30 run for you guys. Come on. 30 bucks, man. <laughs> but then part of me feels like, oh, you're such a lazy piece of shit. It only takes me. 40 minutes to do my whole yard. Yeah, it takes... I, when I mow my family's house, uh-huh. it takes me if 30 minutes. Yeah. I'm, I don't stop. I'm like I'm like a machine. Just, yeah. I don't stop. I do like the, the, the fucking weed whacking and shit. And... Yeah, I don't do the weed whacking. I'm, I'm, I got a phobia, so I can't do it. Of weed whackers? A phobia of anything that spins that. I just get a phobia, man. I get fucking... My anxiety levels are so high. Like if it's near you or if you're operating if it? If it's near me, if I see it moving. Like if you're I, walking up the street and some guy's weed whacking, oh do you go to the other God. side of the street? I go, I, got, I almost got, I might So not. you treat weed whackers like you treat black people? Like I treat black people. <laughs> I don't treat black people like that. <laughs> don't get me in that. Fuck somebody else. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> I, I just want to see if people are like, yeah, yep, yep. <laughs> I heard every part of the I want to try just, and catch you up. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, uh, I your face just, your <laughs> eyes went, turned into like fucking, like monster fucking balloons. You're like, whoa, I don't you buy people like that. I actually cross the street to hug them. <laughs> they don't like it, but that's what I do. I, but I, I have a phobia against like with spinning shit, like oscillating fans. Like if they're going real fast, if I think so about it, s- I'm fucked. You don't like ceiling fans? No. Because I think they're going to fall. Or I know they're made to do that wiggle. Yeah. Some, but I think it's going to come off and cut us. Yeah. Um, and weed whackers, man. All I'm thinking is like, that thing is moving so quick. It's going to pick up a rock, and it's going to go right into my shin, deep, where I need stitches. Or it's going to go into my eye. Or the thing is going to break off, and it's going to fucking cut my ankle off. Yeah, it's probably a good fear. could happen. It, it's an actual thing that could happen. It's, yeah. It makes me the anxiety is in, intense. So my, I'll do the lawn, and my mom will be like, "Are you gonna weed whack?" I'm like, "Nah, I'm not a landscaper. I'm not gonna weed whack. Find another weed whacker, not me." Do you ever wake up like with a dream in the middle of the night and s- stand on a bed that has a ceiling fan and get your head get like hit in the head and knocked down? That's a very specific story, Joe. Now, <laughs> you don't say you don't can't say that like that's a thing that people do. That happened to you, maybe. Every couple of years. 
Yeah, so that's not... <laughs> no, I figure since it happens like yeah. on a rotation that other people are for you doesn't mean it's reoccurring for the rest of society. <laughs> You've never got hit in the head by a ceiling fan. No, but we did take my little nephew when he was <laughs> Don't tell me you threw him up into the ceiling fan. No, I did not. Well my my <laughs> friend mine did. <laughs> on purpose? <laughs> No, he was doing a Gucci Gucci baby, and it went kunk, and his head got hit in the fucking ceiling. Oh, wow. And that's probably why my nephew's an iron worker. Yes. <laughs> it's just a, well, I'll get it. I get, I get it. <laughs> Didn't know babies were so light. <laughs> or I was so strong. You pick which one. I'll go with strong. My ego allows me to do that. It was like this way. It went right up and a thump. Oh, that's awful. So you're afraid of weed whackers? That's insane. I never knew that about you. We're learning things. Yeah, really, Fred. Like, really, like really. And when I first got clean, my best friend's like brother-in-law gave me a job as a landscaper, and it was just me and him doing his business. I hated everything about it. I would wake up at five in the morning. I had to be up till six, but I would get up at five just to watch the Weather Channel and yeah. and pray for the rain to come. Just come on. I don't want to go to work. And my job was weed whacker. Ugh. So you were just sitting there afraid the whole time? Just <laughs> working after, afraid? After a why, of... why is the weed whacker guy crying all day? <laughs> he says he's afraid of it. We call him a pussy and just tell him to go turn that shit on. <laughs> I didn't tell anybody then. I just was walked around and did it, and, and I was nervous as fuck. I got adjusted eventually, but now I can't at all. I can't look at one, because I swear to God, a rock's going to come. Ching! If I'm driving down the street and there's landscapers working, my window's right up, my head down, like I don't want to get hit. Yeah. I get fucked up. So who knew we could rob Mike Gaffney with an oscillating fan? <laughs> Absolutely. You know where the, the oscillating Give me your fan? money. Zzz, yeah. zzz, like oh left and right. <laughs> like, Talking to Darth Vader voice to it. Give me your wallet. <laughs> oh my God, take it all. <laughs> It won't take much. <laughs> my father had one of those. Remember those old school ones that you used to see like in like in the 40s movies where like on the guy's desk, like on the detective's desk is that old metal like. Yeah. Those old black. My father has one. Yeah. And it's old. And it thing moves. And I'm like, in my mind, I'm like, those screws got to eventually be wearing out. That thing's going to zoom right off and uh -huh. it's going to lodge in my chest and I'm going to die or it's going to hit me right in the fucking head. That's what I see. That's the vision I see, and I can't get it out of my mind. So if that fan is on, I won't even go in the room. Like I can't wow. go in there. I got to show you the one I have. Did I ever show you the one I had that I got from my dad's when I cleaned out his house when he died? No. Like, his old landlord was like a fan, he owned fan businesses. Right. <laughs> Called, like, Fan World or some shit. <laughs> I don't think there's a way to really say it. <laughs> yeah, they sell fans. No, it's a fan I business. It, but I I get it, but this is... So he gave him all types of expensive fans. But he got this right. one. Dude, I, I got it. it. Looks like it was made by Boeing. It's, oh, really? Bro, you won't believe it. It's like this shiny stainless steel. It looks like you can ride it like right, right. In, the, in the air. <laughs> and you plug it in, dude, and, and it's so powerful and so quiet. Yeah. I looked the motherfucker up online. It's like a $700 table fan. Really? I'm like, who the fuck would spend Square or round? Like round. Like square a fan? No, like a square box. Oh, yeah, no. Or, yeah, or, or, no, or, or, it's like one of those table like, ones that oscillates back and forth. Yeah, you know look, I mean? okay, yeah, 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 yeah. But, dude, it looks like it looks like something like Willy Wonka would have flew away like on a balloon lid or some shit. Like some weird like, wow, fantasy movie. You, you got a brain that just works, huh? There's all the creating worlds. <laughs> 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 no, nah, I mean, it looks like from something from that era. <laughs> Like Willie, like you had this is like a thing that you thought out. Like, like, look, everybody that just that came like, to me. Like a fucking like that Willy Wonka would fly out of that. Like, what the hell, the fan? No, but you gotta see it. You're gonna know no, what I, I mean. Get when it. I see. I, I'm sure I will. I'll get you. You can paint a picture. I get it. Yeah, next time you come over, I'll put it on. You can run out of the house <laughs> crying. I wouldn't put it on. I'll just show it to you. I won't turn. I won't ruin your day. Lately, I mean, like, not lately, but I don't haven't had the anxiety with the fans as much uh -huh. in the past few years. Like, it hasn't been a thought of mine. I think it's because I'm getting older, and I, 
Like I would be, I would welcome a fan to take my head off. I think it's like I'm at the age. Like I wish a fan would kill me. I wish a fan would kill but, me. But uh, he's walking uh, close to fans. It's one of these days. Oh, Mike froze. <laughs> but uh, my steel. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Fan, you're frozen, my, Mike. You're fro. Huh? Not, you're cutting out. You froze up. Yeah, you're cutting you out. How's you, you how's your internet on? service on your end? My, everything's fine over here. Are you plugged? Okay. You, you're back now. Yeah, I know. We froze up for a minute. There. Welcome to Technical Difficulties with Joe Fernandez and Mike Gaffney. Um, so I've you, been okay with the fans lately, but when I was with my ex, when we lived together, we had a ceiling fan above our bed, and it would go fast because it would be hot in the room. It would go fast, but it was, you know, like a, a ceiling fan does that, like that movement back and forth. Yeah, yeah. It to move so it doesn't snap. Right. Right. But in my mind, it's moving because it's going to snap. Right. And we, and if I really, like, if I wouldn't think about it, I would fall asleep and not even think about it. But if, if once the thought comes, like you, when I say anything to do with physical ailments, your that part of your body starts to hurt. Uh huh. And you can't get over it. Yeah, yeah. If I really, once I think about, oh, that fan might fall and kill me, I cannot stop thinking about it. Right. Oh, yeah. Once, yeah. Just obsessing over it. Obsessing. Tossing and turning, and she'd be like, "Get bad, relax." I'm like, "Yeah, I know, I know. I'm just, are you cool? Can you turn the fan off for a little while? You cooled off? Yeah, you cooled off. Like, <laughs> just turn a fan off. I mean, and I would come in the room like, "Why is the fan on? Why it's not that hot in here?" Like, <laughs> Mike's fear of fans. Yeah, or, or actually rotating things. Rotate. Okay, yeah, exactly. So you don't go on tilt the worlds, I guess. No, that's a huge thing. You know, it's no, I'm on it. It's like, a, do you walk around the tilt the world? Are you afraid yeah. something's gonna snap off that? No, maybe like sometimes. Or like, remember like the Enterprise at like uh, Great Adventure? Oh, fuck that ride. Okay, so you don't even want to be on the fan. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> that's like a big fan. Now, even like anything spinning, like okay, I'll give this is a. I'm um, remember, I'll give you remember Kaplangers. Ka, ka, Remember, what are they called? What? The kabangers, like the little ball. Oh, remember yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Remember the back and forth, bat, 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 bat. Yeah. That would fuck my anxiety. I'd be like, dude, it's going to fly off and hit me. Stop. Well, that's a legitimate concern. I bet there's a lot of, like, one-eyed 45 to 50-year-old men walking around from kaplanger injuries. Then paddle balls. Little yeah. paddle balls. You know, the wood and the little rubber ball and the rubber band? Yeah. I just couldn't get it away from me, man. It's going to snap. The rubber band's going to hurt. The ball's going to hit me. I don't want any pain because you're a stupid toy. Right, right. That, I mean, when I tell you if someone's doing it near me, my whole body tenses up, and I just get, like, protective. I, like, protect my face. Mm -hmm. It's now glow sticks. You ever go to a club? Oh, and yeah, and they spin in glow sticks. glow sticks. I cannot relax because one's going to hit me in the eye. Yeah. I can't relax. I couldn't relax because I was on like three hits of acid. So I'm like, <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. That's I think they put too much speed in this LSD. <laughs> but I was, I'm more of a, I wasn't getting high at those times. I would just go to a club and if that day, if I saw or a dance and they're spinning these around, I have to, I can't relax. It sucks. I can't get out there and dance. I can't be Johnny Smooth and comfortable. I'm all whoa, whoa, whoa! Yeah, I didn't know he was Johnny Smooth and comfortable. So I am on the floor. That's what they said when they came in. Yeah. Yo, Johnny <laughs> Smooth and Comfortable's here. Yeah, there he is. Look at him. Yeah. Got his gold chain on the outside the of his shirt. He oozes onto the floor. Look Zeke Cavaricci's on. He's about to do the running, man. <laughs> yeah, but if I saw a glow stick, I'm like, ah, oh, Johnny it's Stiff. Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh, Johnny stiff and comfortable is walking off the dance floor. Not the Johnny smooth and comfortable is gone, and welcome Johnny stiff. <laughs> I don't know if it's Johnny stiff and comfortable or Mike's doing the robot, <laughs> but he's walking off the dance floor. Yep. So wow, yeah, see you that, listeners? You get... get some inside dirt. Yeah, a little glimpse on us. Every once in a while, it just comes out, man. Who, who knew? That me starting with talking about flowers <laughs> was going to lead to Mike's fear of spinning things. Why do? Oh, because of the weed whacker. Weed whacker. <laughs> yeah, that, that's the, the prime fear. That and fans. That and fans. And glow sticks. 
I gotta pay attention to you more now when you're around fans. See Watch you me looking up in the ceilings. Well, I won't. The fans have been, like I said, like the past few years, I haven't been thinking about it. Uh, but weed whackers all the time. And if a, somebody, if a kid has a paddle ball, I still get fucked up. Yeah, you run into that a lot, paddle yeah. balls? Yeah, like little kids. I got little nieces and nephews. They always have most, you know, you go to a, a fucking, they go to like a birthday party and that's what you get. Oh, uh, like, okay, like, yeah, you yeah. Know yeah. What I mean, look like, ah, like, get the fuck away from me. Right, right. I know you're having fun, you little three-year-old, but I'm punching the face if you snap that thing around me. <laughs> Speaking of, little, I'll tell you a little story about my my nephew. My nephew is just, I think he just turned five. Okay. And his older brother is 11. All right. 10 or 11. So his mom's like, one of you guys, you guys got to get in a shower. One of you guys got to go to the shower. Mm -hmm. So the five-year-old says to the 11-year-old, hey, let's, let's do uh, rock, paper, scissor. Rock, paper, scissor. And the, whoever wins... Doesn't have to go to the shower first. Okay. So my 11 year old's like, okay, cool. So the five year old goes, okay, I'm going to do, I'm going to do uh, scissors. You do rock. And the, the 11 year old's like, not really supposed to tell me what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to lose this one. So yeah. he's like, I'll do scissors. You do rock. He goes, okay. And my 11 year old did rock <laughs> and the five year old did paper. Like, ah, I win. Got to take a shower first. Like, hey, yeah. he hustled them. He hustled them. <laughs> the 11-year-old thought he was being stupid and giving them for information. That's and pretty That's pretty genius. Genius. That's funny, man. And the 11 year like, oh, this dummy giving me the info. All right, here it is. Here's paper. And he's like, here's rock. Oh, yeah, here's paper. I win. You go to the shower. I got to I go later. <laughs> <laughs> that's cute. I thought it was going to be just like. Like how easy it is. How easy it is. Yeah. Like how like when I play hide and go seek with my niece Taylor, she's like, Uncle Joe, let's play hide and go seek. All right, you count first. Okay, count so I can hear you. I'm going to be in grandma's office under the desk. I don't want to be there too long. <laughs> <laughs> okay, one, two, three. <laughs> yeah, no, he got him over. But then he tried it like the next night to do the same thing. Oh, and, yeah. And he oh. goes, right, do you do Brock, I'll do, you know, scissors. And when he did paper, my nephew did scissors, and he loses, and the five-year-old got so angry, he just headbutted my nephew in his lips. Jesus. <laughs> What's his name, Bruno? <laughs> Dino? Is he like a like a mobster? <laughs> oh, you don't want to do the game I do? <laughs> hey, you in the fucking head over here. And he, my nephew has braces, and his lip got caught in the braces. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want. I don't want. I don't want to know any secrets that your nephew has. Yeah, yeah I know. <laughs> and that thing I told you? Nope, not at all. No, sorry. He's probably shaving with a cigar like Baby Huey. <laughs> <laughs> he is a hustler. He, he came to my house the other day, and he, him and my my his father, my other nephew, was. He's like, uh, <clears throat> um, just out of nowhere, like he's like, yeah, I'm a I'm, I'm a kung fu master, <laughs> like with a straight face. I'm like, you're what? He's like, yeah, I'm a, no karate master. I'm a karate master. I'm like, you're a karate master? He's like, yeah. And I didn't. I was like, okay. And he looked at me like, are you questioning me? Like, and my nephew just gonna stop laughing. He's like, like he looked at me. He's like looking at challenges. And he looks at me like, like I don't believe him. And I'm like, what, no. Well, why are you a karate master? And he's like, because my cousin takes karate. And he, like that. That was the reason. Because my cousin takes it. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good enough reason for me to go, oh. I and, if, like, and, and I'll call him to kick your ass yeah, if you exactly. fuck with me. <laughs> <laughs> and then he went off and he was like, and then he went to show me what I guess his cousin has showed him and why he is now a, comp a karate master. Uh -huh. He just had like one kick that barely got off the ground. Um, <laughs> and then like some karate thing. And he was like, mm. and then he just looked at me like, like, I mean, when I tell you, he wasn't even being playful. He looked at me with a face like, now oh no and we're back we had some weird tactical difficulty and you're saying he was looking at you like like when yeah when i when he did like these two little moves that were barely karate moves right and then looked at me not like a little like kid like haha like look at me i did karate like with the stone cold face like <laughs> and after he did his two moves looked at me like and, and you were questioning me questioning <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> like, are we straight now? You got what I'm talking about? You understand the karate master now? Like, you understand? <laughs> I got to meet this kid. <laughs> and he just walked away stone face. Like, I just, I just, that just happened, bro. I told you I was a karate master and I showed you I was a karate master. Yeah. Don't Not even that me. I show yeah. you. I told you. <laughs> I told you and I fucking proved it. Yeah. Two kicks, bro. Don't do it again. Don't <laughs> bother me again. That's funny. And he walked away, stood, and he stood there with his arms crossed, like, like in another corner, like of the room, like, yeah, like, like he was like just admiring his awesomeness, like yeah, it just happened. I don't yeah. even know. <laughs> I, I can't even. Get the, I, I, I don't even know. I'm speechless on my awesomeness. <laughs> if you, if you need to know, I'm overwhelmed <laughs> by how great I am and how great you are not. <laughs> I don't know if anyone's, anyone's ever told you that. <laughs> He's like, I, I could do put twenty push-ups. I'm like, you could do twenty push-ups. So he gets down and he gets to one, the push-up stands. He does one push-up, right, uh -huh. and then the rest is his his crotch going to the ground. <laughs> so he's just like kind of like humping the floor. Oh yeah, like you know what I mean, like Back we up. do. Yeah, yeah. Back up, but his arms never bend. Just eh, uh, eh, uh, yeah, eh, twenty of them. Yeah. I'm like, oh man. He's like, I'm like, what? I said, wow, what muscle does that work? He's like, all of them. Do I see grown men doing that in the gym? And I say, yeah. or just putting their head up and down, like, <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> like, bro, you're like way too old to be this shitty at push-ups. <laughs> like, did you ever, did you ever take the gym physical fitness test, the president's <laughs> physical fitness test? Did you? Yeah, man. I used to be awesome with the shuttle run. What was that, high school? I feel like we did that all through fucking school, elementary school and shit. There was always like the the presidential uh, ba uh like ribbon of physical fitness. You do like these. Was that a Ronald Reagan thing? Considering my age, probably yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. gotta be. <laughs> gotta be a Ronald Reagan thing. Yeah, I was just like a junior in high school at that time, so I don't think I never did the presidential thing. What year were you a junior in high school? Well, I graduated in '87, so. Oh shit! Yeah, so '87, I was uh, twelve. So maybe it's when, I mean, Ronald Reagan was out in 88, but it could have been something he initiated in the mid 80s. Yeah. Had to be. It wouldn't be Bush. No, no. Bush, I was a, I was an adult when Bush was president. Not that Bush. Oh, the first Bush. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it wasn't Clinton. He, he was so in and out, I forgot he was even a thing. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying. It wasn't him. He was too busy fucking shit up to come up with ideas. Right. That stuck. And Clinton's not worried about working out. He's getting high and banging broads. Not going, hey, get the president. As a president should. <laughs> if the leader of the free world can't be banging broads at will. What's the point? What's the point of being the leader? <laughs> hey, do you watch Narcos, man? No. <gasps> what? Sorry. You never watched an episode of Narcos? I watched the first episode of the first season. I didn't like it. Yeah. And then it just fell by the wayside. I just never went back in. Uh, I've been uh, I've been obsessed binge-watching Game of Thrones. I saw your gay post. Um, that wasn't a gay post. That was a good post. No, I'm saying I see your post about the Game of Thrones. I say I get it. Dude, you love Game of Thrones. I'm sure. Killing and naked broads. Narcos, fucking Pablo Escobar and cocaine. Come on. I know. It's really good. I bet it is. I'll, I'll watch it one I, time. I watched the. I mean, I'm the backed up on so many fucking shows. I still haven't finished season two of Orange Is the New Black. I don't have time, man. I, I got know, I shit know. going on. <laughs> yeah, like, I was just talking to this girl, and she like mentioned like three. Po What's that? You mentioned it. Uh, something things. Stranger Things. Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna try that too. That's on our. Oh, own. you didn't watch it yet? I Not thought you yet. watched it. No, the thing is, I'm. I have now because there's too much to watch. There's so much good television. If I don't. Fucking love it. It's got to go by the wayside. Yeah, I yeah. just I got no time for mediocrity anymore. There's yeah, too much yeah. good television. Yeah, you know? I put up with shit television when there wasn't a lot. Right, right. But now it's like, listen, if I'm like, if I'm if I if it, I feel if I'm scrolling my phone while you're on, yeah, yeah. you're done. <laughs> like, right, if, right. If you can't keep me off my phone, it's over. Uh huh. For, uh, Frank just finished watching. Night of, he watched the whole. Like he didn't watch it until it was over. Okay. So started. He just been watched it. Did he like it? Uh, he like we were out yesterday to get something to eat, and he only had two episodes left. And he's like, so good. He goes, but he goes, man, if they end it with him just getting out of jail, 
I don't know what I'm going to do. And I was like, and I just want to answer him. I was like, yeah, man, just let's eat, bro. Don't worry about what happens at the end. That's what everyone's problem with it was. And, and I said to you, like, I get the whole overall theme of the show. Yeah. What it was. But the most anticlimactic part of that was him just getting out of jail. That was, it was, just, and I know to do it any other way, we would have, but it just, it was like, hey, that guy might have done it. Oh, this, we think he's the one who does it. Uh, you know what? I'm not going to press any more charges. It was just like so, that part just went too quick. Right. You know what I mean? But like the whole, the whole, the series was never about who done it. Right. It was I never know. a who done it. It was all about how fucked up the system is. Correct. However, but they laced it with a story that you think they're trying to catch the real killer. Right, but I see. I don't know. Me personally, I realize like once the trial starts, you realize they're not going to. Tr- huh? <laughs> once the trial starts, you realize yeah. they're not going after the real killer. No, I know. It, it would have never got to the trial stage if the show was meant to find out who the killer right. was. Right, right. Because you don't go to court first while right. keep looking. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So, I just my personal opinion on people who think that they're so used to tied up shows like that in that format there's the murderer we got to find the real murderer get him out of jail which goes to what we used to talk about in film school all the time people say they want like new great different types of they want the same shit yeah they want the same formulaic shit people always say how come tv puts on the same bullshit sitcoms you know why because that's what people want people don't want different they want exactly what they know yeah, absolutely. You know what I mean? That's that. That's like why people hire safe comedians for shows. It's like right. People want stuff they've heard already. Yep. They don't want like something. And look at all these shows that come out, even these weird ones, like where where the people come back from the dead. There's like three of those out now. Right. A show that was so unique, like wow, that's a really cool idea. No, this. Oh yeah, it was. And now there's everybody found out that was a cool idea. So we're gonna make four of the cool ideas. Right. Yeah, and people, like, uh, actually, I should send you a link to it. I heard this great interview with Jerry Seinfeld. There's, right. like, this new podcast by this, like, Hollywood Reporter. Uh, uh-huh. repor- the Hollywood Reporter Reporter. It's weird to say it like that, but that's yeah, the name yeah. of the magazine. Right, right, right. <laughs> and he talks about, you know, like, sitcoms and, like, you know, people, like, hate laugh tracks. A lot of people say, like, fuck laugh yeah, tracks. Yeah. He's like, yeah, but laugh tracks let people know when to laugh. He goes, because sometimes things aren't always apparently funny to people. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, like, it's almost like if you like people weren't laughing live at your comedy show, right? You'd be like, "What? No, that's weird." Like, yeah, yeah. But sometimes laughter is contagious, right? You know what I mean? Right, absolutely. Like, yeah, people yeah. need to know, right? You know, that's something funny. Yeah, yeah. It's it's a really good interview. I should send it to you because he talks about like he breaks down comedy a little bit and the stuff yeah. that he's learned. It, 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 he asked like he one thing I didn't know he was saying that like uh, just to go off on a tangent uh, like on a like uh, people think like when he ended the show, he's like, oh, this was like the highest anybody can be. He's like, when we were at that rap party, we're right. like, oh my god, we had the number one show for nine years. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. none of us in that room thought that that was the tip of the iceberg to how popular the show was going to get. He said it got more popular after. After right, right, he goes, right. I'm too humbled. He's like, I'm too embarrassed to tell you how much money we made since the show ended. Right, right, right. Like I don't even want to give you that number. I'm embarrassed. Right. Like, like. Just from not working. Just, right, right. But it was pretty funny. They were asking, like, why he thinks the show was so good. He goes, because it was tight. We made sure every joke was tight. Right. Everything was tight. That's true. You know, he hated having, like, guest stars on, like, guest actor people that couldn't act. Right. Or weren't funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he goes, uh, he goes, if we had a guest star on that wasn't funny, that just couldn't do it, we'd just say louder and faster. Say the line louder and faster, and it would make <laughs> them funny. Right, right. <laughs> I thought that was a pretty cool like breakdown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll shoot you a link to the podcast. Okay. It's it's a good interview. But what I'm saying is like Seinfeld was brilliant for it wasn't formulaic. Right. No, absolutely. You know what I mean? I just think people like formulaic. Yeah. They're used to like where are you going? No, I was just rubbing there was a thing on my fucking thing. You yeah, they're just used to. <laughs> they're uh <laughs> there was something on my camera. And it was bothering me, like a little smudge. Yeah, and then you put your thumb over it and you disappeared for a second. That yeah, was what so to I, you. I smudged it off. Um, yeah, so people are used to that. They like it's it's the same with everything. Like like when somebody get mad and like why do the I can't understand why the Kardashians are a thing. You can't. 
oh, let me help you out. Because anytime they're on TV, people watch. Yeah. And anytime something happens, people talk about it. Every newspaper prints it. And you buy the newspaper, you buy the magazine, or you click on the video that has their fucking name on it. Yeah. That's why people are like thing. People like, yes. You know, so, so they're get the media is feeding you what you want. Right. That's They wouldn't put it on if you didn't buy it. Yeah. I think Star Wars is the prime example of how people want the new Star Wars. You saw the newest Star Wars, right? No, I didn't. I didn't. I went right. to well, if you watch movie. it, if you watch it, and I'm sitting there watching it in the theaters with Justin, and mm-hmm. we both said the same thing when we got out. They go, they made the same movie as Episode Four, Right. Like that original Star Wars you saw? It yeah, was like yeah. the same storyline. Oh, really? Essentially. And you're like, but like all these fan people are like, nah, but they did it for the fans. It was good. Yeah, they gave you something you already saw already. Yeah, yeah. Just with updated special effects. Yeah, and all the characters. Because whenever they go off script for you fuckers, you're like, yeah. well, I would have done this. I would have done that. But they needed this. They knew. They're like, if I were going to get the rest of these movies out, we got to give them something they're used to singing. Right. Because they shit on the previous three, which I don't think were that bad other than the second one. Like when they made the prequels. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. Because right. they weren't exactly... I'm telling you, man, people want what they want. Right. They don't want new and fresh. Right, right. I, dude, I, I was... I remember when I first saw Pulp Fiction. I loved that movie. Yeah, yeah. And I don't give a fuck. I mean, over the years, people have learned to love it, but I'm telling you, at that time, people thought it sucked. Because he was like... He told it out of order. It's an out yes. of order. And people yeah, are like, yeah, what yeah. the fuck is this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What the fuck? And it really didn't have a, a point. It wasn't it like did. a... But it was a great movie. Right. And I'm like, this is fucking brilliant. No one's ever made one like this. This yeah. is great. Over the years, you, like after it's established that it's amazing, people right. see it for what it was. But back then, man, people were like, go fuck yourself with your Pulp Fiction. I used to like fight for Hold that on movie. Hold yeah. on. One, two, three, four. Okay, we're back. No, but I'm telling you, if, like if I had like a... A way to go back in time to see how many people hated Pulp Fiction. I'll take and those same motherfuckers now. I'll be like, I love that movie. Right, right. I just, I, I don't know. That's what I. That's how I looked at the night of. I'm like, you, you, you people just don't realize how good it is because it, it didn't end how you wanted it to. Well, how your brain said it would. How you're used to. Yeah. You're used to whodunits. Go watch fucking Law and Order. That's my thing. Go watch yeah, Law and Order. Like, they wrap up I everything watching, every week within an hour. I was watching it. I'm. I was caught up in the entire story. Like the whole entire thing, right? Yeah. So I, I like the, all the characters. I want to see where they all wound up, and then uh, I kept thinking that it's we're just going to learn about this kid, and he's not going to be as innocent as we think he is. Yeah. I kept thinking he was going to be the guy who did it at the end, mm-hmm. uh, but when it ended, after the way we found we we kind of found out in the beginning of the last episode that we were really keying in on that on that financial advisor guy, and yeah. then they really pushed, you know, found out that he was there. They showed him putting something in the garbage. Like, we saw away all of this happening, right? Yeah. Before we even went to court to say, oh, we're not going to let him go. So, like, we all, like, knew right, who did it now. So, like, that part's over. And then it's just to go, all right, you're out of jail. It was just so, like, what? We've been wait- We've been on edge wondering what's yeah. happening to this kid. I loved it. But yeah. that was the only problem I had with it. It yeah. was a little anticlimactic for me. Oh, definitely, it was definitely anticlimactic, but to me, it was very dramatic because it really like amazing. We released this guy to show. the world. He's a. I mean, we spoke about this last week. He's yeah. a heroin addict. He's now yeah. infamous. His life's never going to be the same. He's gonna, and he's actually kind of a bad guy. Yeah, yep. He, like deep down, there's tendency towards that. Well, he's he, he can he he flips the he can flip it quick. He could be a street thug quickly. Right. Like when he was in school, yes, he was being you know pressured by all the kids because of being national his nationality. But he snapped on them. Then he was taking Adderall to stay awake to help study. But then be- turned that into a business. So he's easily has a reason behind a motive that could be accepted by society. Like oh, he's, he's protecting himself. He's you know he's a Muslim American who's getting picked on. He's protecting himself. Yeah, you can see that. But like holy shit, you do the guy down the stairs a day that he didn't fuck with you just to. Throw him down the stairs, like, right, oh, okay, right. maybe yeah. you're not that good. But you did it twice? Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, you were taking pills? I don't really want to stay up to study. He's a good kid. Oh, and he was selling them? Like, oh. Like, yeah. <laughs> so he's easily convinced to be a criminal. Right. But, um, yeah, but he uh, texted me. I didn't. I haven't talked to him since, though. He texted me. He's like, 
great series and then capitalized horrible ending. Yeah, listen, I don't begrudge anyone that hey, if you don't like an ending, you don't like it. Mm-hmm. What are you gonna do? Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? But yeah, to yeah. say the series sucked, I can't. Yeah, no. I can't take that. Oh no, the series was great. Yeah. I saw probably one of the best first episodes I've ever seen. Oh, for sure, for sure. Next to the walk, to be honest, with you, Walking Dead's first episode. Breaking Bad's at first episode was really good. Yeah, it was. But I was, I was already convinced I was watching that show because of everybody else's right, right, love right. for it. Yeah, like yeah. I, I already missed three episode, three seasons of that show. Yeah, I, caught, I was three seasons behind, so I'm like, I'm gonna watch it because it seems like everybody loves it. So I just gave that a shot already. Yeah, Walking Dead was something like you are with these fucking dragons and Game of Thrones. Yeah. yeah. Like, I was with zombies. Like, in my head, I was like, ugh, I'm not doing zombies. Dude, yeah. Well, that's how I felt. I'm not doing zombies. Then Justin, I did it strictly just to watch it, to have something to do with my stepson. Right. He's like, you guys want to watch it with me? I'm like, I'll do it for you. I want to bond with you. Did you watch it right He don't watch it no more. Now we do. <laughs> Would you watch it right from the first episode? No. We caught up. We were, like, a few seasons behind. Okay. And me and Carrie binged watch, I think, to catch up. How, like what season the, is it now? Seven or eight, yeah. So maybe I think we watched like the first three and then started with four with Justin. Right, right. That's how we watched it. That's kind of how I did too. Same. I missed the first three and then started with four. But Game of Thrones. Oh, no, is, no, actually, I, you I, were watching it already before I started watching it. I hate, I hate fantasy shit. Never watched it. Like you even wanted me to watch that fucking uh, Spart- Spartacus and shit. That's why you'll love Game of Thrones, man. I'm telling you, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so. But you know what it is about Game of Thrones? Like, you got to be, like, you got to be keyed in. Right. Because there's, like, so many, like, people, and the story's so rich. I mean, it's really good storytelling, but you can't have, like, your attention anywhere. Like, you'll come well, back. Well, I'm, I'm always very much, I put my phone aside. I don't look at my phone when I watch TV. I watch TV. But no, it, it's, what's cool is at the end, on demand, they have, like, a little featurette. It's about two minutes long. To three minutes. It's like the like the three writers of that episode. Oh, they just yeah. break down the key scenes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in well, case they did that with some... everything on HBO. I love that. Remember they did it with Newsroom. They did it with Warwick Empire. They did it with uh, what other show? I know they did it with Warwick Empire and Newsroom. Yeah. You know, Aaron Sorkin would have at the end yeah. three minutes about the episode. Right, right. Yeah, it's good shit. I like that too, yeah. But, um, yeah, but... Walking Dead, for uh, I put it on. I'm like, I like the fact that we woke. I woke up into a zombie world with him. Right. Like, nah, I love Walking Dead. I didn't know, just like he didn't know what was going on. I'm excited. But it was for already this. happening. And then the, when he shot that little girl in the face, yeah. like in the first episode, I was like, oh, well, I'm fucking. That's how. That's I'm in this. I'm, fucking I'm in. in. Yeah. And that's how the night of was. Like the night of was so intense. That first episode. Yeah. There's an actress, Lisa Ann Walker. She's on my Facebook, with Twitter, Instagram. So, actually, been a lot of movies. So she uh, she put up, what should I been watch this weekend? Uh huh. And I she said Night of or Stranger Things, and people commented other names, but I said you have to do Night of. Right. And she goes, I already started it about an hour ago. She's like, Holy fuck, the anxiety! I'm like, I know. Yeah. I know. I know the anxiety kills you. And around episode five and six, it kind of like slows down a little bit. Yeah, well, it had to, or else you. Yeah, be... yeah, you couldn't. It, what would have done? Yep. But it was a good show. Good show. Do you have any shows this weekend? I was in Thursday. I was at um, in Michigan. Oh, how was that? Casino at the casino, which is Stress Factory books it. How was the casino? It was actually great. It was a horror rock cafe. Uh-huh. And you ever been to a horror rock cafe? There's there's always a band set up. Yeah. Like with all the instruments. That's where you perform, right? On like the big stage with the music. Okay. Band behind you. So it's like a cool little venue. They set that up to be like a l- cool. Like if you listen, I listen to my recording. It's like echoey. Like because it's like a concert, like almost like a music hall. Right. But it was set up seats right in front of you. And then they had like a balcony. And there was people up in the balcony watching. Oh, oh nice. Yeah, it was really a good crowd. Like, you think that's wide open to the casino, people are going to come in and out at the bar, and they did, but it was quiet. It was good. They were good. Did you have a local opener? It was a kid from Chicago open for me. Yeah. Yeah. Adam, and I can't remember his last name. I'm sorry. That's nice. And then the local radio DJ from, like, South South Bend, Indiana. Uh-huh. 
Pirates. He does the show Jason Lee and Cluck. Okay. He Cluck was there. Oh, okay. Um, so it was good though. It was good. It was a good gig. Good shit, man. I wish I would have been I was able to stay a little longer. I mean, I I flew in Thursday, performed Thursday night, and I was ten o'clock in the morning. I was back at the airport. Yeah, a lot. Yeah. That's yeah, I mean, tight. and it was and the Lake Michigan was like. Not even they said like not even a mile away from the casino because I could I could have went to the Lake Michigan hung out. You know, next time maybe get extended a day. Yeah, next time I you know, I'll go in a day to, early. I would go in a day early. Yeah, I get back to work on the weekend, Friday, Saturday. But I would go in like Wednesday morning. Yeah, hang, yeah, that and then like probably be on my own dime. But it was, you know, Michigan. I can't find a little cheap hotel in Michigan. Hi, something there. All right. Yeah, it's a good gig though. I like cool, it. Man. And then That's... yesterday, Saturday, I was at. Greenwich Village Comedy Club for two shows. How was that? Oh, they were packed. Good crew. Good, good. But like, I was like, the fact that I'm not performing a lot in the city lately uh -huh. is showing when I do these spots. What do you mean? It's just my speed, my quickness, my my. You know what I mean? I'm in. I'm in hour pace. Right, right. Now, I don't do hour pace jokes. I do when I do these. 15 minute spots, 12 minute spots, I cut it down to, I know the, the material I'm going to do, uh -huh. but the delivery, the delivery is a little off. Right. It's a little off. It's a little off. And I can see that I'm a little off. Yeah, because you're taking your time probably. Taking a little too much time with some of the jokes. You know what I mean? The jokes that are quick, quick, they they, they, they fine. Anything that I have to sell a little bit, anything yeah. that I have to, have to uh, the, the, the picture's got to be a better picture, mm -hmm. usually the, the, the lulls are too it's just not a good well that'll maybe tighten those bits up for the road for you yeah you know mm -hmm. you gotta find a way to condense them right that's like I feel like working on all that all my my dad's stuff in the city helped me make it better in my regular act because I start right. I have the I have the courage to start with it now yeah yeah and right it, and it just murders at the top of the show right you know what I mean that's yeah. all from because when you're in the city you gotta do eight minutes so like I can't do jokes to set it up Right. I can't no, yeah, establish exactly. myself. I just go, no, boom, you, right in. You have to say, well, normally I like to tell this joke first so I can tell that joke. Like, nah, not today you don't. <laughs> right. You want to get to that new joke, you can't tell the other joke so the new joke is funnier. You better make that joke funny on its own. That's what I, yeah, that's why I booked a couple city spots for September because I was like, I, I like, I want to keep making that stronger and stronger. When are you in the city? Uh... I'm in the city on uh, September 20th, I believe. September 20th. I'm doing Greenwich Village at 8 and then the Village Lantern at 10. Okay, cool. Yeah, so. Um, I'm there Wednesday. I'm back at the, the Greenwich Village Wednesday. Oh, and cool. then the week after, I think. Yeah. Um, no, it was good, man. I, and I had fun, like me, Dustin, and... and uh, um, a couple other comics like just hanging out in the green room, James Matterin talking, laughing. Oh, nice. Yeah, it was cool. It was a nice, relaxed, chill environment. Yeah, yeah I mean, it was. Yeah. It really was. It wasn't like, you know, like, oh, we're all, like, it's just, we were hanging out. Like, right. drink, you know, drinking a cup of coffee and waiting for our spot. And like, oh, get up, boom, 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 and you're done. That's what I like about the city, just hanging out, shooting <laughs> shit with comics. Yeah. Do your spot, go back to shooting the shit with comics. Right. And yeah. there was, Dustin said there's a, when I went to eat, there was a taco truck. Dude, right across, if you're at the Village Lantern, right? Say you come out of the door of the Village Lantern. Uh-huh. Right across the street to CVS, like Caddy Corner to the yeah, Village yeah, Lantern. Yeah. There's a little side street right there. Right next park on that side street next to the next to the CVS is a taco truck. Uh-huh. Banging. Really? $3 tacos, bro. Soft shell tacos. I got a chicken and two steaks. Oh, I'm, I'm there. Oh, man. it was so good. It wasn't too spicy, just perfect flavors. Huh. Very nice. Nine bucks, three soft shell tacos, feeling fat and happy between spots. <laughs> it was good. Um, it was good times. Good times. What did you do? Anything this weekend? No, nah, I had well, I had the show. Uh, Scott Brennan had his first show at this place called Tap House 15. Yeah, he just and, uh, reached out to me about that. It was good. Yeah, I told him to because I was like, dude, get Gaffney for the second show because it was yeah. a really good first show. Pack. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, I'm like, yeah. keep it like good. Is it a bar room or is it like a separate room? It's just, it, um, there's a, 
like when you walk in the restaurant, there's a big bar to the right in restaurant. Then to the left, there's a separate room, but they put up like a curtain. Right. So it kind of – I couldn't hear the bar at all. Okay. But they started the show so late that most of that was filtered out on a Thursday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I, I think sold out the room will hold 50. Okay. And it was it was packed, and it was right. amazing. Oh, good. And, like, good food. You gave you free food. The owner sat and watched the whole show. Yeah, he told me that the food's really good, too. And, uh, but, yeah, I told him to reach out to you. I'm like, because I was like, I was like, people had a really good time tonight. I'm like, you want to make the next one, like, really good. Like, you got to, right. like, keep a momentum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know. But everybody did good. It was uh, Scott Hosted, KP Burke, this kid Mike Sicoli, and uh, Jackie yeah. Byrne. Like, everybody just did great. It was just, like, oh, a good. solid show. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, but I was off all weekend. Just doing, you know, husband shit, going out right, to dinner, right. fucking. It was kind of nice, actually. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I told I was out with Kerry. We went out to this uh, Italian restaurant we go to called La Cucina, and I'm like, I'm like I kind of like that. I have no anxiety of arriving somewhere on time or or mm-hmm. having to be somewhere. Like I, I, kinda, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I'm just like I needed this weekend off. <laughs> right, right. Of like panic attacks. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what about this coming weekend, dude? I'm de- I'm dead in September, man. I'm I have like <clears throat> most of September. I'm just gonna be probably going do workout rooms. At the end of the month, I have gigs like a what, but like, yeah, I have to start. I don't know. Don't know what to do. I think the career's over. <laughs> yeah, mine too. Um, it's just the fall sucks. I mean, I have some um, sporadic. Summer sucked cock. Well, no, it's weird. It looks bad because my weekends are bad, but, like, like I got headline dates with Uncle Vinny's every month. Right. And he gives them to me on the weeknights, which is good because my weekends are free, but I'm still making the money, you know? So, like, my weekends blow, but I have work. Right. You know? I'd rather rather headline on the weekday and have the weekend free if if my career could work like that. What's today's date? Today's the 5th. Oh my god! Uh, uh, why do I feel like uh, no? Please, I think I must not start today. What happened? <sighs> I just think that I, uh, I thought I had to be. Just stay with me for a second. Okay, we're with you. We're with Mike as he sorts through his calendar live on the On Our Heads podcast. I just, for some reason, I know I have to go to. I have to go to Lake Placid today. Okay. That's far. If it's today, we're not going to be making it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> While Mike looks over his calendar, I'll let you guys know that uh, we are now available on iHeartRadio app. So you can download the iHeartRadio app and listen to... Oh, we are? Yeah. Nice. So it's, uh, now it's a real easy to listen to us. You download the iHeartRadio app and we're there every episode. It's October 3rd. It's October Monday, 3rd. The first Monday in October, not okay. the first Monday in September. Yeah, because I'm like, you better leave now if you got to be in Lake Placid tonight. Yeah, well, no, there's no making that. It's a, what, a six hour? No, it's, it's not actually that bad. It's only, like, it's just about five hours, but. You need to leave. Now, like, and you've been listening now, what? Like, yeah. like now yeah. we're not. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, ooh, that was uncomfortable. But yeah, my fall sucks, man. Like, even if I wanted to record my set this fall, like, I would have no time to work it out because I can't. <laughs> I'd have to, like, right. make my own show just to work out my show. Right, right. Yeah. I have a clip. I want to. Sent to you, so you can you hold off on putting this up. Yeah, how long do you want me to hold off on? Well, I just got to get it off my phone onto my computer and edit it. Down. Okay, you gonna you gonna preview the clip before I pop it in right now? It's really it's not it's just a little it's not negative audience reaction. It's just me asking a woman in the crowd does she have kids, and she says yeah, two, one of each is what she said. I said how old are they? She said 12 and 9. I said, which one's the oldest? She said the 12-year-old. <laughs> and I just <laughs> make fun of her for a few minutes on that. <laughs> oh, good. I can't wait to hear it. So we're going to pop that in right now. Mother 
So that was a Greenwich Village. Greenwich Village. That was it. It's just fun interaction. Yeah. <laughs> and like, and her husband was like, looked down. He was like, fuck. I was like, ah. You knew she was going to say something. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> she had to say something like real loud to me first. She was like, she was like, I, I just heard like overrated about kids. And I was like, it was like a whole bunch of like things to tell like Long Island Italians. And like the one girl was, one of the girls was so drunk, like she, like her face kept staring at me like I was an asshole because I'm talking in their direction. So like, uh -huh. what? Like she's just, she was like cunty. Yeah, yeah. So I turned away, I said something, and all I hear is, kids overrated. So I turn back, I'm like, which one of you said that? Cunty face looks at me like I'm making things up. Right. And then the woman I couldn't see, she was like, right here. I'm like, I said, who just had angry mom Tourette's? Who just yelled out, kids are overrated. Who just had that? No one wants to admit it. And then her husband was like, her. And I was like, oh, you. And that's when I said, you have kids? Like, yeah, we all have kids. And I'm like, well, we, we didn't elect you president of the mom association. I'm not asking you to talk for this whole group. <laughs> right, right. You, lady, you got kids? And like, yeah, I got two. And then I was like, all right, what do you have? You have? I have two, one of each. Oh, nice. How old? 12 and nine. Nice. Who's the oldest? The 12 year old. Okay. I'm like, okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> It's just fun. I like when shit just happens like that. Yeah. I like talking to the audience, man. I really do. I like getting into it. If I like, I like talking to them. If I like them, if I don't like them, I don't want to talk. Yeah. I had a woman trying to talk to me at my Thursday show, but I just kept barreling it over. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I'm like, this is the. F I'm not doing this tonight. Yeah. I just wasn't in the mood. Right, right. Like she just kept seeing that I'm ignoring her. Did she? Because she would like try and like make comments about like whatever joke yeah, I'm just. Yeah, yeah. I'm just Carry on with the joke. Right, right. But the the only time I acknowledged the audience, the only time I really did any, like they had a checks drop, and I just, I explained to them what was happening. That's that's my check, that's my hacky check spot thing. Now. Right. Like, oh, here we go. And I just want to tell people what happened. Yeah, yeah, right. You know. Right. Uh huh. And they laughed at that. I'm like, see, I'm like, I was like, I can't do jokes right now. You guys understand, right? Yeah. Everyone's right. heads down. Yeah, yeah. You know, I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the way that I mean. You got to do something. You got to acknowledge it and and try to eat the time up without, you know, premises that you, you're you're throwing away because no one's listening. You know what the, I mean? The waiter was really good though. He was really like slick about. Oh and, nice. and after he goes, I'm so sorry about the checks, but I had to. He's like, he goes, I I come from I I, yeah, I was in entertainment for years, so I know I was I was an actor, and he was actually in the the movie The Truman Show. Oh really? He played like the doctor or something. Okay. And uh, not that I remembered him by visual, but. He told you his resume. Him and some other people that worked there, I guess they vowed. Yeah, yeah. They, they were his yeah, IMDb. Yeah. But he was, I was like, no, you were good. You were very stealth, like a ninja. To like, he like drooped yeah. in and popped nice. it. And I'm like, see, that's, you know. That's good. But uh, no, that was a good show. But yeah, it's like, I just, and she was an old broad too. So you're like, it was like an older woman. And I'm like, yeah. I'm just going to come off as mean. Yeah, yeah. I'm really. I always, like, <laughs> I ignore. I barrel, I barrel, and then maybe by, by the fourth time they try to chime in with a, oh, my kids do the same, whatever they try to do, yeah. I then stop and go, you've noticed I've ignored you the whole time. There's a reason for that. 
and then I go back into my act. Right. And hopefully that hurt her feelings enough to shut the fuck up. And then maybe people around her may get a little hurt for her. Right. But then the last come back out, and they're like, okay, I got it. He was just shutting her up. <laughs> and we move on. Now, if you really lace into her, then you, you risk the, you know, run a risk of losing their whole table. That's what I was like. I just want, I want, I just want to do my act and go home. I'm doing well. If I wasn't doing well enough with the rest of the crowd, I would have been like, all right, what? <laughs> and try to grab something, but it was really going well. And I'm yeah, like, yeah. why am I going to derail my own show right. to deal with this asshole? Yeah. Like, everyone's <laughs> having a really good time. Right. Yeah if, I, yeah, if I was in survival mode, I'd be like, all right, yeah, fucking yeah. attack. Let's go. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> they don't like me either. Let's fucking bring this home. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> but uh, that's that. So, yeah, my schedule blows, so I'm hoping I pick up. Uh, you know what? Like I was uh, talking with Ritu, I'm like, I'm just – I don't. It doesn't bother me no more to my schedule blows. It just makes me like, you know what? I'm just gonna be working on new shit at these workout rooms. Right. It's right. gonna be a time where I build shit instead of being like, I, don't, I got no gigs. I said shit always comes up for me. Yeah, yeah. So I, I'll sometimes bitch to my wife. I'll be like, I got no gigs. She's like, you say that all the fucking time. She goes, you said that before the summer, and you were not home at all. Summer this summer. Right, right, <laughs> right. And yeah, I'm yeah. like, yeah, I know, but that's just... the thing that sucks about. I mean, I, I, I was asking. Oh, when I had to give that, like two weeks ago, when I was talking to the group about comedy, when when uh, the comedy horse Tommy asked me to talk to his writers group, yeah, they were asking me a ton of questions, and one person said, "What's the uh, one thing that bothers you that bothers you the most about you know your this career?" Uh huh. And I was like, oh, "My the anxiety of an empty calendar, and yeah. it's not the anxiety that I'm not funny, I suck, blah blah blah." blah. It's not the only part of it. It's right. the financial part of it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, looking ahead at your calendar sucks, and everyone does it. There's not a person who doesn't do it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And people's calendars are filling up, and they know. But I've, like, I know Kathleen well. Kathleen will say, look at your look at my calendar and tell me what you want. I'll look at her calendar, and sometimes they're, and I know she probably hasn't updated her calendar, but I'll look at it, and it's only one month out. Like, there's nothing going on. Right, it's like, you know what I mean? Like, so everyone's looking ahead of their calendar. Everyone is, and everyone's looking at dates, and they're looking at holes, and they're going, "Fuck, how I make that rent?" You right, know what I'm and 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 then you can take the other part, which I try not to do as much, but I am I'm guilty of it. Where I'm like, I'm just not good enough. If I was good enough, they would book me. That's the downside. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and I don't stay in that world. I try not to. But I can go into that world. Yeah, I try not to be in that world. That's why I try to like make it. I'm just gonna work harder and create more shit right. in this time. That because it, you know, it just comes to the fact that I, I I need to get out more to different bookers and stuff. It's like, yeah, how many times can I perform at the same places? Hi, Carrie. Uh, hey. <laughs> she just waved to me. <laughs> she walked in like she was said invisible. Hi. <laughs> she waved. <laughs> she walked in like she was invisible. She was like, I yeah. can. No one can see me. I'm like, I can, I can clearly see you. <laughs> we got to do that uh, cross country trip. We talked. Remember we talked about doing a road trip, like yes. putting together a ro- like a like a tour. Yeah, yeah. We well, I got that. a bunch of names. I reached out to Dave Landau, uh-huh. and he shot me like a bunch of Midwest rooms, like the one nighter kind of guys. Right. Like that. Okay. We can run out and do like a Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Boom. Go somewhere else, do a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, that kind of thing. You know what I mean? Yeah, totally. You know, you put a little scratch together, and then you do like I, I I ran into Craig Fox Saturday night. Uh huh. And he said he when it when he was in L.A. he sold all his shows. I think he sold five hundred tickets. Yeah. And he did like four or five shows out there. See whatever he did, but he wound up selling like five hundred tickets. You know what I mean? Making good change. Yeah. You know, so that would be, uh, you know, you get a place like, you know, like KC just did, right? KC Aurora and uh, uh, what's his name? They went out on the road, hit some places. They went out for like two weeks, three weeks. They just hit some places. Yeah, that's what I was telling you that I was thinking about. It's like you got to think about the, 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 the shittiest pay gigs we take locally. Right. It'd be like, all right, if we make some door deals, people, if we're leaving with this. Right. This is what we would have been at home. Right, right. But we could make more. Right. And the only problem is is not knowing the areas because we don't know the area's potential. So you're like, 
you know, how do you find a place that, hey, I want to do a door deal? And then the guy's like, yeah, we had nine people live in town. So, yeah, you could do a door deal. Right, you know yeah, saying? yeah, like, no, totally. You know, like, we don't know the area. No, well, some places, like like the place I did Thursday, like Scott doesn't sell tickets. He just gets a budget. Right. And then they put on a show. Yeah, the places customers. like that, sometimes their budgets are weak. So if you get a, a room that has can potential of six, you know, fitting 50 people, and we say, we want to sell $10 tickets, right? Yeah. It's $10 tickets. Uh, and if we sell 30 tickets, 300 bucks, we made a buck 50 a piece. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. You just find these rooms that aren't impossible to pack, or then you find one night bookers that go, yeah, we do one nighter, it's 500 bucks. Yeah, or real clubs that will do yeah. like Wednesdays Wednesday, or Sundays, or yeah. Thursdays, you know what I mean? You just do that and. Yeah, whatever. Just figure something out. I mean, right, right. What are you gonna do? It's better than sitting around. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, try yeah. and try and make something. Right. But what are you gonna do? Nothing you can do. It is what it is. I'm just gonna bust my ass this fall. I got some, you know, some ideas to do some shit. I got my my October is good. My November, as of right now, September is gonna barely get me through. Yeah, it's okay. It's not horrible. I mean, I'm working every week. I got something every weekend, which is better right. than you know summer. And and October has two chunk weeks, gone, like a week, you know, in Florida and a week in Vegas. So that's you know that's good money. That's good. I'm working. Yeah, and maybe one other midweek gig, some like a little theater for like three hundred bucks. Um, but November. Has nothing. I don't think. Yeah. See, financially, I'm fine. So I got the football picks till through, through the Super Bowl. So I'm basically making them making the football picks money. The videos oh. I make. Oh, I was like, what do you mean gambling? Are you that no, I don't good? gamble. I just oh, make I make no, the, I make the I, videos for the sport. You know. Yeah, but the way you stake a football pick money, like, yeah. like no, and we may be getting FanDuel, so it may even like get no, richer. I, the way you said it, though, oh uh, yeah, it's not like you were talking about working a camera. Yeah, like, no, I, I produce football. football I produce football pick videos with Gino Bisconti, and we make money from that. So it helps me in the ad revenue from that, right? Yeah, 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 ad revenue from that, and uh, that's pretty good. No, oh, absolutely, yeah, that's good. No, because it's like okay, it makes you breathe. Right, right. You know what I mean? You're like, it makes it easier to like do these other shitty rooms. Right. <laughs> But yeah, fundraisers used to be like packed in the fall. Yeah, I got like one a month. No, yeah, usually I'm. This is what I make. This is this. Tis the season right now. Tis the season. But uh, I I don't know. It's it's another thing is school isn't back yet. When school gets back, PTA start meeting, family groups start meeting, team sports start to get together. Then they start doing fundraisers for their, you know, cheerleading squads and the soccer teams and. All that starts to come into play yeah. more after school comes back. Hey, any listeners in the tri-state area, if you want to do a fundraiser, Mike Gaffney and I, we could oh. fundraisers, man. Yeah, we raise the fuck out of funds. Yeah, man, we'll we'll entertain your audience. So absolutely, go to mikegaffneylive dot com or joefernandez dot net. Hit us up. We'll put together a show. Yeah, you go. We don't even need no, no middlemen. We'll just we'll get it. We'll get yeah, it we'll together. Take yeah, we'll yeah, take yeah. care of it for you. Um. And you can help us out. Yeah, absolutely. Right? We give you free content every week. Yeah. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Fuck it. Right. Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. that's. I have to go fucking clean out a closet with my wife. Or else she's going to kill me. <laughs> I put it off for days. Unless there's anything really important you wanted to talk about. I There was, and I don't know what it was, because when you just said content, it clicked and I wanted to bring something up. But I don't remember what it is at all. Okay. I just said the word content. I'm like, what? There was something I wanted to say, right? About about that it's gone. Uh, I'll tell you Whatever. about. A, I'll tell you off air about a, a project I'm thinking about a short film. Okay. What I'll tell you off air about some stuff that happened. So. Okay, everybody. So we're gonna go talk like creative shit. That yeah. We will present to you, but I can't give you the idea on air because then that's silly. That's just silly. Yeah. Then when I make it, you'll be like, I already saw that shit in my <laughs> head when you said it. <laughs> So, yes, everybody, uh, I don't know how you listen, but thanks for listening. If you're on iTunes, keep it on iTunes. Um, if you want an app, we're now on iHeartRadio. Um, I'm going to keep promoting that to let people know that that's where you can go. Um, please go on iTunes and uh, comment. That helps us get up in the rankings. So thanks for listening every Wah. week. Huh? 
Now, real quick, uh, this week, just before we cut out. Oh, yeah, yeah. This this Friday, Friday doesn't matter. Friday, I mean, I'm at Pocono Palace where I'll, where my dreams go to die on Friday. But on Saturday, I'm at the Looney Bin okay. in Staten Island for the first time in a while. So if you're in that area, please come support. Yeah, man. Uh, yeah, go support Mike. I'll, I'll promote my dates closer to the end of the month. Okay. I mean, I'll be at Uncle Vinny's the last Wednesday and Thursday of the month, and I'm with you in, in Lancaster that following weekend. So That's right, yeah. So go to our websites, uh, joefernandez.net, mikegaffneylive.com, and you guys have been listening to All in Our Heads. Mm-hmm.